But for us, meh. Juan Soto apparently turned down a contract that is that was worth more than four hundred million dollars, and the thinking behind it is that his agent, MLB super agent Scott Boris, has probably told him that I'm going to get you to be the first Major League Baseball player to sign for half a billion dollars, so five hundred million. I think. That's what he's told Soto. I think that's what he's guaranteed Soto. And I think he may actually get it. Now, the rumored contract offer was in the 15-year range. I think the the dollar amount only worked out to about, I I say this funny enough, only worked out to $29 a year, which isn't as much as you would think in in comparable. Well, I know you're making that face. I don't know. I don't know. Comparatively to like, how much did Harper get per year? And how big of a mistake was that? Well, yes, <laughs> it's like, hey, they made a mistake. Let's make an even bigger one. So there's only a handful of teams that can really afford Soto and have the prospect capital and players that can make this deal. Who do you think is the preferred landing spot for Soto for Soto's camp? And who do you think ultimately ends up getting him? Well, right now, the league and the club is apparently out of the two New York teams. Um, apparently, the Yankees and Mets have good farm systems. I don't know. I think the Yankees system is always pretty propped up by by the media and such. Obviously, you have to say the Yankees are the favorite. Um, there are a few teams that can sign them, like the Jays can sign them, but I don't know if they're going to be willing to give it up. He just, I don't think it's the money. I, I listen, it is the money, but I, I think he more just does not want to play in Washington. I think he's done with with that. I think he wants to go to a bigger market. Um, we're talking about a guy who's having a, a a, a down year. Uh, he's got, I believe, two years left on his contract. Am I am I correct on that? So yes, they have two it's years gonna, to, Yeah, it's going to be a trade. It's going to be heavy prospects. And my question is, would our team's going to be worried about trading big time prospects and players for a guy who's batting two fifty, you know, nine hundred one OPS numbers that are down from his his career average? But it's a lot to invest in a guy that you know you're four hundred million for a position player. I, like good player, obviously a very good player, but I don't know. I but you have to say the Yankees. And I mean, whenever you talk about this, you, you go Yankees and then maybe the Dodgers. But apparently, the two New York teams are the leaders in the clubhouse. Yeah, just 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 to uh, p- piggyback on that, they have the Jays at fourth, uh, plus six hundred. So Yankees, Mets, Giants, Jays. Well, Giants, right? Yeah. Do you really think Toronto, number one, wants to make that deal? And number two, will end up signing him because they've got to sign Vladdy in a couple of years to a really big ticket, which will probably be in the $400 million range if they want to re-sign him to a long-term deal. That's what it's going to cost. I think they they want to save that money for their own guy. But the, the thing is, he's not really a rental. So if you're going to go out and make a deal for a guy you're going to have for two years, even if you don't re-sign him, you're going to get draft... Uh, draft compensation he's going to be a type one free agent uh which means you're going to get basically a first round pick for someone else who signs him and you're gonna have him for two years in his in his quote unquote prime i believe he's 23 years old he's 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 entering his prime two years i would almost say given how much you have to give up it's almost worth having him just for those two two years especially if you think your window is is open well well that was going to be my thing right like how how um good do you feel about your team's chances of winning in a division where every team right now at the all-star break is at 500 or better you know they're they're in in the division of death right now but to get out of it you want to give yourself every advantage right the question then becomes what are you how much are you giving off your roster that if you bring this guy in are you better from a talent standpoint probably but like what are you giving off your roster that could make you worse you know, uh, I'm I'm just scrolling through some odd things here. I'd, I'd love to do the uh, what we used to do the uh, funny things Hab fan sa- says, but like this is some of the funny things Jay's fan say because I see some of these uh, trade proposals and it's it's like half the roster <laughs> unless Juan Soto is going to play three positions. Um, it, it's a lot, man. But again, does this make them a better team? Of course, you know. Of course, he's a lefty bat. He's a lefty power bat. I mean, he. This is exactly what they need, to be honest with you. But are you willing to give up 
you know, and, and we talked about it before we came on the show. You're probably looking at you're going to have to give up one of the corner outfielders. They'll probably ask for Gurriel. You're yeah. going to have to give up one of the three catchers. They're going to ask for Moreno. I don't know if you can trade him. They're going to ask for probably Relvis Martinez, the top, yep. the top prospect, maybe and and plus plus. So it, it's is it worth it for two years? I hey, listen for me, I like gambling. I'm I'm a gambler. I like teams. Oh, we that are, know that. You know that, right? You know Vegas <laughs> knows that too, right? I'm a gambler, and a lot of the times I lose, but. Sometimes you got to push your chips in, and I I like teams that are very aggressive. You know, we we've, we've seen it right now with with the Leafs, and we've seen it with the Raptors. You know, talking about going after Kevin Durant, push your chips if you want. I, I'd be okay if they gave up prospects. This is a team that is already loaded with good talent. They're in a position to to move in on this guy now. The question is, are they going to resign him? Probably not. And then uh, he's going to go and walk to the New York Yankees. So it, it's inevitable in two years, this guy's going to be a Yankee or a, or a Dodger probably. So, so what do they say about prospects, Rob? Yeah, they, they claim that they're good, but they're still unproven. You drafted so, to be traded. That's what prospects know. are in baseball. Um, he, here's my favorite proposal, just so you get, to get an idea, Rob. Trade proposal. The, the Toronto Blue Jays get Juan Soto. The Washington Nationals get Bo Bichette, Nick Suzuki, and Cole Caulfield. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. That sounds Jennifer good to me. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> I wonder if that, that's my favorite one. I just want to throw one. that out there. Have you seen, Frank, do you have any in front of you that like, yeah, I, I've gone off the top of my head of what I, I think do. it would take. Yeah. I what, do. What's, what's one that's on there that you think is pretty realistic? Yep. Uh, so I got uh, Jay's get Juan Soto. Uh, and that's, it, I'm just seeing the one I'm sure there could be multiple guys, but let's just say, so I got one here. The Jay's get Juan Soto and the Nationals get Lourdes Gurriel uh, Gabriel Moreno, Ricky Teeterman, Oof, Samad no. Taylor, and Spencer Horowitz. No. Uh, four prospects no. and, and a, uh, and a, and a, uh, roster player. No, Tiedemann is flying, flying up the, up the oh, prospect Bobby, you're a gambler, man. No, Push your chips into the middle. Oh, not, not a pitcher. Tiedemann. You didn't not hear Tiedemann until th- two weeks ago, and all of a sudden he's <laughs> untouchable for Juan Soto. I like That's him. the guy that you're going to... I, That's I'm, the guy okay. eh, that you're going to... He's okay. my guy now. He's Rob, like, you want to gamble? Okay, Rob, yeah. you want to gamble? I got a question for you, okay? Let's play Let's play fantasy. The Jays trade for Juan Soto. Okay, let's just fast forward this. Jays now have Juan Soto. But Rodgers can only sign one or the other, Juan Soto or Vladimir Guerrero. Who do they sign? Wow. Got to be Vlad. He's your guy. He's your homegrown guy that you drafted when he was 16 years old. Yeah, and and outfielders are kind of more dime a dozen. You've got Springer that's already signed long term out there. Yeah, I I'd, I'd probably go Vladdy too. And I think he's more of an I think he's more of an elite bat talent. That's a good question though, Frank. I think these are all. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think the Jays are going to get him. Obviously, I'd love to see it, but. I think it's just the, the the cost is going to be too much, but they are going to use like the Nationals are going to use the Jays and and the Dodgers to drive up the price for some of these other teams, which is good. You, do you got do you guys like horror movies or scary movies? I used to love them. I like Stranger <laughs> Things. That's like. Are you going to sing the song now? You're running up. You're running up that hill. Oh God, no! <laughs> nobody wants to listen to that. Here, here's something scary, Rob. Well, you're a Yankees fan, so not too scary, but. How about an outfield of Aaron Judge, Giancarlo Stanton, and Juan Soto? Yeah. That's and the, an expensive outfield. And and the fourth Sorry. outfielder, that very short porch in right field. That's, you know, like 290. Jeez. It's like two-door field out there. just <laughs> <laughs> With the wind carrying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, uh, I don't, I don't want to get into that. But, yeah, no, it, I, think, I think it's inevitable that he's going to end up there. Um, but – I don't know, man. I, I Before like we move on, can yeah. I, can I just ask, like, what is the rush to trade him if he's still got a couple years left? Like, I think if he, he becomes a free agent in 2025, so why do, is there a rush to get him done like in the next couple of weeks? Well, it, we're just talking about it now because the trade deadline is coming up. You know, well, so they yes. want to move him before the trade deadline. The, the earlier you move him, the more capital you're going to get back, right? We're talking about a guy that you're going to have for two and a half years, or I believe two and a half years, as opposed to trading him and. Next year or the year, the longer you wait, you guys know this, the longer you wait, you know, the longer the, the Blackhawks wait to trade Patrick Kane, the less return you're going to get. 
And, and you know, I think Aurelvis Martinez is probably going to have to be in that move. Ricky Tiedelman, I I like this kid, man. There's something cannot about him. Cannot trade Ricky Tiedelman. I cannot. Think, and whatever and that Moreno, package is, cannot he, he include He is him. the new Jordan Groshans. He's the new guy. He's my guy. Ricky, are you listening? You're my number guy. one fan. Bobby Bottles is Ricky Tiedelman's number one guy right here. Big, the biggest. <laughs> the biggest. Big, 